Sooner Scoop HD. It's a great uh, time of the year uh, for us to get back out on the practice field again. Um, never gets old. Really, really fun time of the year um, as you start over and you rebuild your team uh, literally from the ground up. Uh, I know we met here just a couple of weeks ago talking about uh, you know our signees, getting an opportunity to get them in front of you. Hopefully, uh, you all enjoyed that. And uh, as you continue to build relationships with them, uh, I think it was great for them. They had a great time with you all, so appreciate you all uh, giving them a bunch of softballs, uh, a bunch of layups. And uh, But we've been really, really busy uh, for the last uh, two and a half months. And from program installation, we got uh, 26 players that um, – this is the first time they've been on the on the squad here at mid-year. And uh, a few new coaches, um, you know, obviously self-scouting, uh, studying other people, finding ways that we can be better uh, on and off the field uh, efficiency-wise, making the improvement where we need to, really taking a good hard look at ourselves, and then building our players um, from a strength and conditioning standpoint, speed standpoint, uh, all the while developing, you know, the right kind of uh, mindset and uh, getting our players uh, a very clear vision of what it takes to be uh, successful. Um, but building team morale and chemistry and leadership and challenging our guys uh, in a variety of ways, uh, both on and off the field, um, is what we've really, uh, you know, worked on here for the last uh, several weeks. I'm really excited about this group of guys. There's a hunger and an edge to them. Uh, great, great humility, uh, willingness to work and do the hard things uh, that we ask them to. Have really, really responded uh, in, a, in, a, in a big time way. A um, lot of uh, speed and uh, strength gains uh, across the board. You know, really excited about the the improvement that we've seen uh, from that standpoint. And uh, you know, with the recruiting class. Evaluating these guys, obviously, uh, playing the game of football uh, is what it's all about. You don't win in a pair of shorts. You know, you got to put pads on and you got to block and tackle and catch and uh, execute and all those types of things. So we'll continue the evaluation process of these guys. But what I love about them, again, as I said before, they, football intelligence seems to be a, a strength of this group of guys and um, guys that are willing to come and work every day, a very focused, driven, uh, you know, group of newcomers and as, as well as the guys that are returning. Obviously, we've uh, comparing where we were a year ago uh, with, uh, you know, percentage of, uh, you know, experience and um, uh, offense and defense, you know, a little bit less than what we had a year ago at this time. But I really feel like we've improved our football team uh, over the last um, several months through both recruiting and, and development and some of the uh, returning guys' experience uh, that we have coming back. Uh, the couple of new additions we have, uh, we've hired Seth Luttrell as an offensive analyst. A uh, great opportunity for us to get better uh, on staff with um, former uh, Oklahoma Sooner. Um, obviously, his dad was a heck of a player, owns two national championships to, to Seth's one. Uh, so dad still got the upper hand, but the guy that's been, you know, around the country and has been a head football coach and uh, did a fantastic job while he was at North Texas and uh, one of my favorite players um, that I uh, didn't uh, coach per se, but one of my favorite players, a guy I loved having in the locker room uh, when I was here uh, when uh, Seth was uh, a young player. Um, then we've also hired James Skowski. Uh, as a graduate assistant on defense, uh, great great player uh, at Clemson, and and uh, somebody that's really just plugged right in. Uh, is really going to be our players are really going to benefit from from having him. Uh, we have one player with a position change, Marcus Hicks. Uh, we're going to let him try out uh, uh, defensive uh, line and. Uh, Give him an opportunity. I know he was recruited as a jumbo guy that could be either or, and really he wanted an opportunity to uh, show what he could do on the defensive line. So hopefully we can keep him healthy and give him a chance. He's been banged up a lot, and uh, so hopefully he can have a, a healthy spring and and uh, you know strengthen us on the defensive line. And so he's 
he's made the switch. I know we already talked about uh, DJ Graham, uh, you know, moving from a defensive back to, to receiver. Um, guys are going to miss the spring. I'll just give you kind of an injury uh, update here. Uh, first of all, just uh, thankful that, uh, and I won't speak a whole lot about it other than uh, Gentry Williams. I know uh, there was an episode here, uh, exertion, exertional collapse is what they, they've termed it. Uh, you know, his labs have all checked out, and, and uh, we're getting the labs again today, and you know, he'll, he has a cardiac clearance uh, meeting tomorrow, uh, so we'll see where that is, but really proud of the, the response by, by the medical staff, and uh, we're always looking at ways to make sure that our, our players' uh, safety uh, and health is first and foremost, and and uh, just thankful that uh, Gentry uh, appears to have, uh, you know, gotten himself out of harm's way and recovered uh, just fine. But uh, Kadem Helms you know, he has a, a knee patella thing going on, so he probably will miss uh, all of the spring. Jason Llewellyn uh, got a, just a midfoot issue with a, a growth plate. He'll miss all of spring. Eric McCarty you know, towards ACL uh, late in the playoffs, and uh, he's been here as – Rehab has gone really, really well. Amika um, Omegua, you know, he's also has a just had a, a surgery to clean some stuff up, but uh, he had a, a meniscal and a ACL injury prior to getting here. Uh, Walter Rouse had a shoulder labrum surgery on miss, yeah, and that was again that was back in December. So uh, nothing that was new to us, but he'll he'll miss all of spring, and then Jacob Sexton is really recovering nicely from his ACL uh, in the uh, Florida State game. Uh, other than that, uh, we really expect, you know, we have some guys that are going to be a little bit limited. Trace Ford, uh, you know, he'll be a little bit limited. and uh, But we really feel like he's going to work and progress into to full speed uh, work by the end of uh, sometime in the spring. And then, uh, Kelvin Gilliam, Jaden Rowe, and uh, Shane Woody are all coming off of shoulder surgeries. That, but uh, they're all progressing really well. The surgeries were all done prior to the end of the season and uh, really like where they're at. They'll, they'll participate mostly in just indie stuff, uh, individual drills, um, non, non-contact. So got plenty of guys with bumps and bruises, and uh, we still got booty and uh, uh, some kind of contraption to protect his – his finger that uh, dislocated, um, but he'll he'll be he'll get he'll be ready at some point in time here quickly, and uh, and again just the normal bumps and bruises. So um, with that, I just remind everybody the spring games at the 22nd and set 2:30. Uh, contrary to a lot of y'all reporting that we're going to be at 11 a.m., it's actually going to be at 2:30. So uh, uh, time to pack the palace again and uh, make this place a special place uh, at that time. And then, and then lastly, we had uh, really uh, thankful for uh, Josh Norman uh, and, and staff that uh, took 11 players. They went down to, uh, to Brazil uh, over the break, uh, just coming off a of spring break, and guys gave up their spring break to go uh, serve down in Brazil. And so I thought that was a, a, a great experience uh, for those guys. So anxious for them to get back and share some of their experiences with our players. Um, so with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. Start on the right side, my neighbor. Yeah, Brent, we found out some more, uh, a little bit more details about the proposed uh, new facility. When you Go over that and everything that y'all want to be a part of that. What to you is the biggest need, or maybe a couple of the biggest needs uh, in, in adding that? Well, it's, it, everything matters um, first and foremost, and you know, a facility for many people is where you train and become a great football player. But to me, this is all these kids are going away from home for the first time. So for me, I want a, I want a home. You know, I want a home that's efficient, a phone, a home that's connected. Uh, efficiency is a very important thing. You know, you get eight hours in the out of season, you get 20 hours during the season, and just like that, it, it, it goes by quick. This is this is the only program in, in all the college football in the top ten that uh, the, the, the football facility isn't connected to the indoor facility. And so as we know, the weather gets pretty crazy around here. And at the drop of a hat, you got to leave the, the practice field because of lightning or whatever is getting ready to happen from a weather standpoint. And you either are able to finish practice by, by going to the indoor or your practice is canceled. And um, 
Uh, so there's a there's a lot that goes into it. Um, we we want to create a home. Um, most importantly, a place that um, that has everything that we need. You know, that's you know from a. a you know, both a, a training, a development standpoint. We want to be the best in the country at development, and uh, we want to be a developmental program. We don't want it to be uh, become, you know, what, you know, again, the, the NFL is. And the NFL is, uh, it's all about just the money. And, you know, no matter what happens in college football, we know that the genie's out of the bottle. We know that, okay? I think we're all in agreement. Um, but the difference is, is the majority of the guys – are not going to have an opportunity to play in the NFL, all right? The majority of the guys, all right, 99.9% .9 of them have a lot of growing up and development to do. I'm not talking about football. I'm just as young men finding their way in life. And, and so you do all that through relationships, through a home, through uh, efficiency, you know, both on and off the field matters. And, and so, you know, we're not going to be, um, we're not going to change course uh, in regards to, you know, you know, what's most important, what, what is the purpose of the program, is to graduate our players, give them tools um, to be great husbands and fathers and leaders, um, uh, make sure they have that degree in hand. I mean, that's going to open more doors and create more opportunity for them than anything that football will. And so you provide an environment that's conducive to those things, and then you know, you want them to have you want to have fun. You know, college should be fun too, and you do that again through uh, through the football family. Uh, you know, create an environment where it promotes that, and it's not a you know uh, it's not a transactional experience for them. You know, where you go to the ATM and you push the button and you spit your money out and you don't talk to anybody, and uh, but you got your money and mission accomplished. Or you know, you got to get out of your car. You got to go into the lobby, and you got to have a conversation, and you got to, um, you know, communicate with people. And we want to be again a relationship-driven program. You know, one that uh, it's a lifetime uh, experience and relationship uh, for these guys. And and again, a ton of development. And and so again, my values and my compass, and I make decisions. It's you know one of the the, the things that, that's a filter for that is as a dad and as a parent. And I want our guys to uh, you know to have a place where uh, it goes well beyond the football field. And uh, and I know where where you know college football is the landscape. And there's a you know the the potential pay for play and all that. And, but that's not going to change the vision of this program you know, in regards to uh, development of people. And I think that's the greatest calling of coaching is the development of people. And I'm not going to, uh, you know, the, the bottom dollar is not going to change my mindset in that way. So, um, you know, there is a, a recruiting aspect to everything. Some people say, oh, the, the facilities don't matter. Like it says, who? <laughs> you know, I, this is where they're going to live. They're going to spend a lot of time. And so, and these guys are going to, you know, travel, you know, past a lot of places where we're recruiting, you know, a, a lot of great places. And so you want to, you know, you want to create an environment that um, and, and, and have something to showcase you know, that's the best in college football, whether that's uh, the, the strength and conditioning, the, the elite recovery, it's nutrition centers, uh, a dining facility where you build a lot of relationships, uh, you know, you know, you want to create an environment where they can have fun and they can connect. And so there's things that, you know, that, that go along with that. And not only do they, they want to come, they want to see it, but they want to stay and they want to be a part of it. And so, you know, f finding, uh, you know, a facility that can also be a communal place from a, from a family standpoint is a big part of it, too. These families share uh, in the ups and the downs and the highs and the lows of these kids, you know, uh, you know. These moms care about all the players that her, her sons are friends with. You know, these dads care about the kind of uh, young men that they bring home with them. And so we want to create a place here, too, that when they do come on game day, that they have this amazing place to, to share in the journey together uh, as well. And I think that's a, it's one thing to promote yourself as family, and then you walk in and it's, it's really cold and nobody talks to anybody, and there's nowhere uh, for these guys to, you know, it's, it's a maze, it's not a home. And um, so, you know, all of that matters. And just like, a, 
if you if you're out house shopping, you know, and you have a, a, a real choppy layout as opposed to a, an open floor plan, you know, there's a reason that you most people like that open floor plan, and it's because you want to have the ability to to connect and um, and organically. So uh, there's a lot to that, and again, the the physical development piece that's a very real thing. Uh, but it goes beyond uh, just that. And right now we're, we're trying to, you know, uh, you know, what we want is the, the most efficient facility in all of college football. Eric Bailey. Brent, when you get to coach the portal newcomers for the first time on the field, how often have you been really pleasantly surprised with their development, where they're at, versus sometimes are there players where you look at them and you say, okay, we've got some work to do with this guy, stop maybe what we saw on film. Is there a about the two, do you see both sides of it? Well, I mean, so there's a maturity. Usually, it's a little bit different, just because they're older and they've they've uh, you know whether they've been scarred up or they've played a lot and they've 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 grown, they've matured. So their mindset a lot of times is different than maybe a a, a freshman. So that you, that can be an advantage, but you got to still at the, at the same time find guys that are team guys and. Uh, so we really feel good about the group of guys that we brought in from um, team-centered leaders uh, where they're coming from and then having the maturity to learn, know, you know how to go and compete every day and uh, that they believe inherently that you're going to get what you earn. And so those, those are the, the biggest things. But, again, you know, what you love about a, a young player is that you know, you have all this opportunity to develop them, and uh, and guys that are going to be there for three, four, five years. You know, by that fourth and that fifth year, by the time that comes around, these are guys that can play at a really, really high level consistently for you. So, you know, the the negative of the portal is the guys are in and out, and so there's can be constant turnover. And that, at the end of the day, that's not what you ideally want. You want continuity and stability on your roster. That's that's a good thing. Uh, you know. Even if it's a little lesser talent, you get a guy for, you know, three, four, five years, those fifth-year guys, man, they're, they can play at a really high level and they understand what winning football looks like and they certainly understand inherently and deeply how you do what you do. Thanks, Brent. Mm-hmm. James Hill. You know, Brent, you go into the spring looking, you lost quite a bit of your wide receiver production, graduation, whatever. You just told us about a couple of tight ends are off. Talk about your receiving core going into spring and, I, those guys, who's who you expect to develop and come, come on for you? Yeah, so, you know, a couple of them were guys who were freshmen. Uh, Nick Anderson, you know, was banged up most of the year last year. Jaden Gibson was still just really tall and skinny and learning how to, how to uh, have the right mindset every day. Uh, J.J. Hester was a, is a young player still. He came in from Missouri and uh, was hurt. Uh, had surgery and sat out all the year. Even Gavin Freeman, who we created a role for him, you know, he uh, he didn't come in till late. So those are guys there, uh, just to name a few. And Andrew Anthony is a is another newcomer. Really, a guys that weren't in the competition last year for those reasons I just said. And um, so I think those will. Uh, we're really excited about that group of guys. If you, if you went down each one of them, what you what you loved about them. And take up everybody's time, but uh, we did lose, uh, you know, quite a bit of our production from a receiving standpoint. But I really love that group of guys. In addition to you know other guys are returning that that have played Farouk and uh, Drake in particular, as as guys that you know that we know can play winning football. And, and then we have a, a couple of signees that'll be coming in sometime uh, in the first part of June that we also feel we'll be able to jump into the mix and. And, uh, and hopefully help us as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Eli? Brent, there were a lot of factors last fall, but statistically the, the defense for you dropped off from some years at Clemson and then even in your first run here as a defensive coordinator, whether it's personnel or, or time, on, and we're obviously far off from playing real games, but what makes you confident, what elements are you confident about your defense this year and improving? Yeah, just uh, – feel like foundationally we set a very clear vision of what the standards are, uh, what the expectations are. Certainly we spend a lot of time at developing uh, guys that are returning. Um, so the returning experience uh, is, a, is an advantage over what we had you know, a year ago. Everybody was new. Uh, again, I really feel like through recruiting we've uh, strengthened our, our roster positionally 
particularly in the secondary. That's probably where I feel like uh, you know we made the most improvement. Where you you have a very based on what you've seen up to this point in time, uh, and you still got to go prove it every position across the board. But I really feel like okay, we're better. We're better in the secondary, and we've added more bodies at other places. Uh, you know, a number of the linebackers aren't here yet. Uh, but I really believe the front seven, you, you know, the closer you get to the ball, the harder it is to play. And we'll find out, you know, where we're at from, from that standpoint. But I have love how everybody's worked. Uh, but it, I feel really good about the, the guys that we've added to the secondary, which is a place we really needed to improve. I think we had eight secondary guys. Uh, and, and, but the biggest thing is year two. I've just I've always seen um, improvement and expect marked improvement. Uh, learning how not to lose to Oklahoma, the fundamentals and the improvement there, the physical uh, improvement from a strength and conditioning standpoint, and then the knowledge, the you know the intimate knowledge that you got to have so that you can play fast, you can play sure of yourself, you can play with great fundamentals and technique, uh, play aggressive within the scheme because of your sureness. And then we have improved through recruiting, as I said uh, earlier, you know the the football intelligence of this group of guys, the instincts of this group of guys that is there and and so those are all things foundationally that you that it you know that it takes to be you know to be a good defense so you know if we can uh from an efficiency standpoint and we we were poor in a lot of areas but uh you know we defended the most possessions in all of college football so we got to be more efficient and getting off the field and then we got to be more efficient at, at on both sides of the ball of, of complimenting, you know, one another, uh, not compensating, you know, for one another. And, you know, a good football team is going to complement one another. And so we got to do our part with the improvement, but I love the leadership, uh, the hunger, the edge, the accountability, um, uh, the awareness, all of those things. That's how you grow and improve. And the improvement process, you know, it can be very, very discouraging. And uh, but foundational, I know we have the right foundation, and then I, I believe in the guys that are in that locker room, and then what I've seen, and again, you know, I, I really expect wherever we are today, uh, you know, by by the time April twenty second gets here, that we're going to see improvement, and I I just use years and years of experience, uh, never happens fast enough, uh, and wherever we are by the end of next season. You know, it still ain't going to be good enough. And I want our guys, the best of the best, are never satisfied. But I, I expect us to be on another planet defensively. Uh, you know, everybody else can talk about, you know, a projection of rankings and all those types of things. I just want to see improvement and, and all the, the basics, the fundamentals. Our guys played with good effort last year. Um, we just didn't play or co coach well enough in a lot of areas. And, again, we got to continue to improve with our fundamentals, uh, uh, you know, our techniques, uh, our understanding, and again, the physicality that it takes to win uh, and win with, with great defense. And at the point of attack, we, we weren't very good last year. And, uh, you know, we got bullied around and beat up too much, whether it was outside on perimeter screens or at the point of attack on a quarterback counter. He got knocked off the ball and got ran through and, and just played bad, bad defense. And, uh, and if we put it on the field, it means we coached it. So, uh, we got to get better, coaches and players. And but I, I really like the hunger and the toughness that these guys have attacked the out of season and, and the edge that they have going in uh, to spring ball. And I think it takes those things first uh, to you know. You ask me why I believe that we're going to be better, and uh, that's why. Bob, yeah, uh, Brent, look at the running the running back room losing Eric Gray, not just the production. Leadership, and then that's such a young room. How how do you try to balance that? You need to see more from Gavin, Javante, and Marcus, but you also don't want to put too much on to where they might get hurt throughout spring. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the group of uh, running backs that we have. You know, we lost half of our rushing yards. I think we have 30. 32% of our receiving yards coming back. We have 50% of our rushing yards coming back. So it's a little better than you'd probably think. Eric was fantastic. But remember, that was his first year starting. And everybody wondered going into last year, too, how are we going to replace Kennedy Brooks? And um, and Eric really stepped up. You know, he had his opportunity and, and uh, really, you know, stepped up and was a great leader. Wasn't real 
uh, vocal, but he showed up and acted like a pro every day by his consistency and his, his toughness, had a great mentality, a willingness to go to work every day, responded to good, hard, tough coaching that DeMarco uh, will give those guys. And I, I love our running backs. I really feel good about where we're at. They need to continue to improve, so you have to practice, you know, and, uh, and guys get bumps and bruises. That's part of the game. You, nobody likes it, but that is, you know, a byproduct of developing your team. And, you know, you can't practice in a soft way and expect to play in a hard, tough, physical way. So that's all going to be part of it uh, on the journey. Uh, but it's a, it's a really good, strong group of guys that I think um, are, are really looking forward to having their opportunity to be in uh, the guy. But you know, I think for us to be at our best, we're going to have to have good competitive depth. I believe that we have that. That'll be determined. And I like our leadership. These are guys that are accountable. You know, DeMarco doesn't – he hasn't recruited guys that, that aren't accountable. And that's, you know, the challenge for everybody, you know, on staff is to find guys that, uh, you know, that value hard work, that value education, that value being a great teammate, uh, that value, uh, you know, going through something, having to overcome something, having to fight through something. They value that, that they, they have a very uh, clear uh, vision, you know, all the tough things that it takes to be great. And, uh, you know, as we say all the time, running towards the hard, that's a part of it, and having some failure along the way. So these are good, tough, mentally uh, and physically uh, players that we're talking about at the running back position. And, and again, a test of time will tell, but I really believe that, that Eric, you know, if he did anything, he did a, a great job of showing guys how to lead. And, uh, you know, Javante and Gavin being guys that are returning along with Marcus Major, who we're going to get back uh, here to start things up, uh, you know, all have the right mindset to, to you know, uh, to continue to do what Eric did for us last year. Back to the right side, Barry. Yeah, Brian, you talk about <clears throat> – uh, developing the defense, mm -hmm. long-term development with third, fourth, fifth-year players. But does the portal give you a chance to make year-to-year -year big jumps with a unit? In other words, Bothroyd, Lacey, McCullough, Ford, whoever I'm leaving out, does just the presence of a portal and the immediate eligibility give you an opportunity to take major steps in one single offseason? I think, I think it gives you that chance, no doubt. Um, uh, you know, the things that they're bringing to the table, whether it's improved uh, skill, um, the experience, having guys, you, you can't, it's hard to just manufacture experience. So within your roster, sometimes you have more of it returning than other times. This is an opportunity to bring the experience. And then the biggest thing to me, the biggest challenge is, is finding the right people. And, you know, it's not like uh, you have, you know, a bunch of day one NFL draft picks that are available in the portal every year. And if there are, uh, they don't last long. Uh, and and you always got to kind of question, why Why would they? What, what, what's the story? There's always a backdrop to it. So, you know, I think I think that the key is being able to find guys um, that are good enough, you know, that meet your needs. Hey, and sometimes, look, we got we got to find some bodies that can come play, that can execute, uh, you know, because of Again, you might have lost a bunch of guys at one position. We lost a bunch of guys up front, so we had to bring in a bunch of guys, both high school and portal. But it does let you bridge a gap uh, quickly, uh, but you got to find the right guys that are, again, our team guys, guys that learn well, uh, guys that are going to come and compete every day, guys that are available. You know, they're healthy too. We, we took a chance on a few guys that we felt like we uh, that were worth it. Um, that we're going to come in a little bit, um, you know, overcoming some injuries from a previous year. And uh, so we're hopeful that'll, that'll pay off as well. But uh, you can definitely get better um, quickly with, with, you know, uh, experience and maybe, again, improved players at particular positions, you know, no doubt. But there's still a learning curve, and there's still uh, the, you know, guys having the willingness to come in and compete and handle adversity. And if they're not the first guy, first few days, the first few weeks, the first few games, how are they going to respond? Are they going to be still going to be good team guys and judge a, judge a, a, a player, you know, in moments of adversity and, and strain, you know, not when things are going great. And so uh, we'll have a chance to see that during the course of the spring and then 
uh, certainly that'll all play itself out during the course of the year. But really excited about those guys on defense. And Reggie Pearson was another, I think. Um, I think you hit on about everybody else. Uh, you know, and again, what we've seen, how these guys, their mindset every day and their humility and, again, the way they come and compete, that's been fun to see, uh, whether it's Lacey or Bothroyd or uh, Devin or uh, Reggie. Uh, Desan, those guys all have showed up um, with a hunger. Like they got something to prove, and they got a lot that they have to continue to improve at. You know, a guy like Desan, he had shoulder surgery a year ago and coming out of high school, and so he didn't have a year of all this physical development, which he needs. His frame needs that. He's got a, a really good frame, but not a. He's got. A, he's got. You know, a lot of uh, filling in still to do, which he will do over the course of time. And he's made some great gains already. But uh, these guys, none of them are, are, are finished products. Some of them have played a little bit more, like a Bothroyd, uh, than others. But um, a Pearson's played quite a bit. And uh, But we, we brought these guys in to, to make us better. And whether hopefully that's a starting position. Uh, if, if they're good enough to earn it, um, great. Uh, if not, that means that we're getting the best version of guys on our roster, and some of them, some guys that we took, some of the, some of that played into it too. Hey, let's let's bring in some competition here. That usually brings out the best uh, in in everyone. George Doyle. Uh, hey Brent, kind of going <coughs> off that transfer portal stuff. Over the last year, has your opinion or perspective on going into the portal changed when you see teams like a TCU compete for a national title after? going with all this roster turnover and secondly does it I mean do you feel like you were more prepared this year to go into the portal than maybe last year yeah and I don't know what all TCU's I know on uh, offense they didn't have a ton of uh, a turnover I know they had a lot of returners especially uh, up front a veteran offensive line and a, and a quarterback um, that was a Heisman finalist that was not in the portal uh, and, and they did a great job a really really good job but uh, we have the same philosophy, you know, again, address your roster, how it needs to be addressed. Um, you have to be re prepared to respond when, if you do lose a lot of guys, uh, as I said, you know, you know, we gave guys 12 months of grace, you know, when we, when we got here uh, 14 months ago, uh, uh, we had almost half the roster. We wouldn't, I and mean, we, we had a lot of work to do. There were some things, I know we had won some games, uh, but, uh, you know, you know, there's a lot of uh, issues off the field that we had to fix, and a lot. And uh, and over the, the course of, you know, uh, two teams, and change and turnover after the first, uh, after the Oregon game, and then certainly, uh, you know, giving guys an opportunity to figure out if they wanted to, you know, live up to the standards and the expectations of, of our program, help guys that maybe um, needed to find a, a – you know, uh, a better uh, opportunity to go play. And, uh, and again, try to give guys the help that they need at some point in time. Uh, you know, you've got to be willing to make some, some good, tough decisions. It's the last year that we are able to sign more than the 25 uh, initial uh, scholarship. And so we wanted to take advantage of that. And uh, so that's how we got to 37. And so that is not going to be the norm. Uh, but that's, that's always going to be an opportunity for us to uh, gain some experience and some playmaking, you know, where, where we see fit uh, when you have guys leave early for the NFL or graduation. Or, again, if you have somebody that you didn't expect, a returning starter, you know, pick up and leave, you have to be ready to respond. And hopefully you're, you're recruiting and developing the right guys uh, right here in your own locker room. To me, that's the most important portal that we have is creating an environment where guys are – uh, they're treated the right way. They're shown value. Um, they're developed uh, in every part of their life, on and off the field. Uh, you know, in their journey, they they know they show up here every day that they matter, and I think that's important for us. So, I want to still make it very relational, and uh, even in the in the, the the days of the portal, and and as opposed to transactional, and uh, and and still recruit guys even within the portal that are looking for that. Maybe they're leaving a transactional place and they're looking for somewhere uh, where it's it's about a lot more than just the ball. For a couple more, far right side, Ryan Chapman. 
Right, you mentioned the influx not going to be the norm, but how much different is that going to look this spring as opposed to last spring, considering that every phase was, was new for you guys with the coaching staff coming in? Yeah, I mean, having the returners, uh, that's what you're alluding to, the returners, yeah, that's it's a lot different. I mean, you still go all the way back to the basics of program installation, which we've been doing for the last uh, few months. Uh, how you do what you do, it's, you know, everybody needs to uh, always – uh, be reminded of what those are, again, what your standards are, what your values are, what your uh, expectations are of your guys. Uh, so, but there's there's not as much newness to, to all of it, and so that's been uh, fun. Um, you know, guys are able to, to finish the end of your sentences, both uh, in the meeting room and, and, uh, and just talking about, again, pro program installation. So it's it's going to look a lot different. You know, guys know how we practice, how we stretch, uh, you know, what we do after we stretch, all of those things, how we practice, uh, you know, uh, in shells as opposed to, you know, being out of, out of uh, you know, out of pads. And uh, so there's the processes and the procedures aren't as new for as many guys, but you still can't take any of it for granted when you have, again, 20, you know, five-plus new guys. Uh, you got to assume that none of them know what to do. But it's going to be, you know, getting to, to the end point is going to be a lot easier in a lot of ways. Okay, second row right to the front. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the guys maybe be able to complete your sentences and such, but this is your second year. Obviously, you've had a year to do this now. Is there anything different that you'll be doing in terms of the way you run the spring based on your year of experience as a head coach? Or maybe anything that different that you'll be looking for out of the spring based on your experience? Yeah, I mean, you're always uh, developing, you know, mindset. Uh, you know, we spend a lot of time on doing that. You're always going to do that. Uh, just being more efficient probably uh, all the way around. You're always looking at ways to tweak things, new drills to do, uh, how you how – you, you know, incorporate different, you know, parts of the practice where they all lie. Uh, and so you're always looking at ways to be better that way. So there's some subtle changes, uh, you know, both in how you meet and, and how you walk through and how you actually practice. Uh, but the, the meat and potatoes of it will remain the same. And uh, having the right kind of balance on and off the field will, will remain the same uh, as well. Come back over here to Jesse. Brent, you've talked about how much you like the versatility of this incoming class, particularly on defense, maybe making an impact on different positions. Just when you have this spring period, how much is the emphasis, especially with some of these young guys, at getting them different looks at different positions, or how much is it maybe just getting them acclimated and adjusted to to, to college? Well, um, that's you know a good point. You know, you you don't want to uh, overload guys as they're trying to transition. There's there's a delicate balance, and so if you are doing it, you're typically doing it with guys that you really feel like, for whatever reason, uh, their maturity, their mental capacity, uh, their skill set, all align with, hey, I'm going to give you a little bit more homework uh, to handle. And if, if you do that, and you have to be very uh, conscientious and, and just paying attention to uh, how are they handling that. And if the load's too much, be willing to pull back. And uh, so, but for us, for us as a defense, we need to find find out more about some guys in their versatility to to find out you know, whether it's sub packages or just maybe even competing for a starting position. And uh, some guys might have the opportunity to, to win a job at multiple spots. So we've identified who we think might be. Um, that'll end up changing by the end by the end of the spring to some point, some degree. Uh, we might discover somebody that we feel like, hey, we need to maybe look at them at. You know more than just one position, uh, but this is an important time of the year where you know you can't remanufacture. You don't have to play games right now. So the ones that you want to find out, you know, you hope hopefully they can they can be overloaded with from a rep count standpoint because you just can't remanufacture reps. So the reps that you you do right now are, are critical in trying to build a foundation. Um, maybe it's for discovery on your behalf or for building up their foundation going into next fall, you know, when you you, you can't have that same philosophy uh, during the fall uh, just because you want guys to be able to be fresh and what have you. So, uh, you know, this is what that time of the year is for without question. And we'll see a little bit of, um, you know, a handful of guys that were, you know, really anxious to, to see them at a, at a couple different spots. Coach, looks like we got one more question in the back left. 
Um, Coach Venables, with right, spring baby. ball on the way, can you speak on that special feeling that Team 129 has? Well, what I love about Team 129 is um, they love to work. And it's a group of guys that have fun. They, we had as fun a competition and balanced a competition. I told the guys uh, the offense pulled out way out in front in our competitions uh, the first half of uh, winter conditioning. And then the second half, the defense came out of nowhere and, and got it all the way to our very last competition, and we tied, uh, which I don't know i have going on 28, 29 years if I've ever been there. So what I see is competitive balance. Uh, you know, competitive stamina, and and again, great great humility and willingness to go to work. You know, hopefully that'll that'll bode well uh, on the field. Absolutely. Now, one more question. What's your favorite animal? Why? <laughs> my favorite animal, uh, Danny Stutzman, uh, is my favorite animal, and he's my favorite animal because that man knows where the football is. He knows how to find the ball. So there's your affirmation for the day. Danny needs a little extra attention, everybody. Just so everybody, if you all weren't aware. So. Don't worry. All right, thanks, Coach. Yeah, good to see you, Danny. Is that it? All right. Sooner Scoop HD.